This is a question you get asked all the time. I'm sure you already know what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two. What is your stretching routine? Okay. Uh, my stretching routine. Um, so basically, they're they're very simple stretches. And a lot of people who read the book, they believe that I got this routine from this guy named Joe. Joe turned me on to stretching. I had to make up a stretching routine that fit my lifestyle and fit my tightness. So I do simple, very simple quad stretch. So you know how you can, how people sit down and, um, and, and they pray. I believe Muslims pray a lot on their knees and their, and their, and their heels and their butt touch. My heels were off my butt by probably about this much when I first started. So I sit in that for about 20 minutes at a time. And when I get to about, you know, a pain level of six, seven, I come out of it. So, but I make sure to do it 20 minutes, not straight, but 20 minutes in the stretch. That's one of them. Another one is a very simple Indian stretch where most kids, most, most grownups can just sit Indian style across their legs. My, my damn knees were like this. So I had to get my back up against the wall and it took me years to even get to the point where I can get my knees out. So I, I do a lot of psoas stretching. Everything I do is very basic, opening up my hips. But what I found out though is opening up my quads. My quads were so damn tight that that caused a whole bunch of stuff to be off. So once my quads opened up, a lot of other things opened up also. I'm here right now. After I leave here, I'm going to go home and stretch out for two hours. Okay. I stretch, stretch out every, for I stretch two for two hours. I've done this, and that's in my book also, the, yes. the last chapter I talk yep. about it. I got real sick. Long story short, stretching out has really helped out my psoas muscle. Okay. That psoas muscle attaches to your T12. There's a lot of nerve in these going through What's there. the psoas muscle? Where is that? It's your hip flexors. Oh. So all of us who sit down, like I'm sitting down right yeah, now, right. whenever you're in that fight or flight mode, let's say you're driving your car and the car's coming to hit you, yeah. you get that tense. So my childhood all the way up till now, it's been just squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. So about six years ago, I got to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. The docs couldn't figure anything out, nothing out with me. And I had this huge lump on the back of my head from my spine being compressed. I had these huge lumps on my hip flexor muscles, you know, psoas area. Right. And it's the only muscle that attaches your lower body to your upper body. Okay. And I just slowly started stretching out. I said, I'm, I'm gonna probably die. The docs couldn't figure it out. I was slowly dying. It was mm. literally collapsing. Like there was no blood flow yes. to organs in my body right. from all the stress in my entire life. Started stretching out. I was on all these medications. Six years later, no meds. I'm on one medication. Really? And I was mm -hmm. on about 17, 18 medications. Wow. So the two hours of stretching continues to help the body. The uh, mind also. The mind. So that's your quiet, nothing else going that's on. That's right. But what happens is when your psoas is so tight, it sends all these different hormones okay. to your mind, making you extremely stressed. Mm -hmm. And so by stretching out, it releases that muscle. So when that is tight, even you can be relaxed. That muscle being tight is tricking your mind saying we're in a stressful situation interesting firing you up firing your mind up would you tell people who struggle with anxiety to give that a shot people who are having any kind of surgery on their knees hips back neck shoulders if you don't have full range of motion and i'm telling you right now i have so much i could talk about with this right you need to first of all get full range of motion before you let somebody cut on you. Gotcha. If you're dealing with anxiety, any kind of issues like that, I would a lot of it has to do with your muscles in your body being tight. I couldn't sit down here for a minute with you right. six years ago. Right. I had trouble sleeping for seven, eight years. I'm talking about sleeping for two hours a night. Wow. Was it? Because of all this adrenaline going through my body. And would you start in this hip? Because you know what people are dealing with anxiety? Tons. I mean, they're on medication. A hundred percent. And what you're saying is you start with those hip flexors. You start with your quads. Quads. Because your quads are so big, they get so tight. Okay. And once they get tight, they start pulling on everything else. Okay. So open your quads up first. At least that's what I did. And then work on those hips. You got to open those hips up. You have to open up that hip flexor muscle. And then you want to release that back. Because a lot of people have back problems. Yeah. A lot of times, it's just that psoas muscle literally just pulling. Yes, pulling the back muscle down. Pulling that down. back muscle mm -hmm. down.
Wow. Yeah, Unbelievable. There, there's so much. But I figured this out literally by saying, I can't run. I can't go to the gym. Right. I'm sitting here dying. Right. I'm real tight. Just let me start stretching. So I shave my head almost every day. Right. As I was shaving my head, I started realizing this bump was going down. Interesting. And the more the bump went down the back of my head and on my hip flexors, the more I started feeling better. I go, there can't be a correlation here. Mm -hmm. There was a hundred percent correlation. Sure wow. Now this isn't any doctor. Yeah, no, no, no doc. This is all me. Sure, sure. I don't know if it's true or not. I know for me, right, right. It changed my entire life. Wow. Well, just something. It's very interesting. The little nugget there for you leaders out there. Because I talked to him before this, I was like, "What should I ask David?" That's not obvious, you know. And he's like, "Ask him about how he stretches for four hours a day." Is that true? It is. I actually, so I, I had a multi. I have, I still have a multitude of health health issues. Right. We didn't even, you know, like I'm just being conscious of the time, but like we didn't, we didn't even talk about the fact that like in 2010, you had this crazy heart thing, right? right. Like I remember because you were killing it in racing, and then you just had to stop. Right. 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 It wasn't until you came back in like 2013, but there was right. like a period there where you were off the radar. Huge period. I was extremely sick. I'm still sick now. So everything I talked about in my life, it comes at a price. It comes at a huge price. When you will yourself, so when you don't have ability and all you have is will, something's going to give. And what gives is your internal system. So my adrenals are shot. So your adrenals are your fight or flight. Like I discussed, I was scared of everything I ever did in my life, and I had to find something much deeper than myself to pull out, to, to turn myself inside out. Mm -hmm. And how I did it was I used a lot of my adrenals, and I had to find this, uh, to get through all this pain and suffering and fear. And basically, my adrenals have shut down, all this, and everybody just say, God, is it even worth it? Sure is, people. Sure is. Mm -hmm. Because that is my trophy, not the sickness. I knew what I was doing to myself when I was doing it. I found what I wanted to do, but it now I'm getting healthier. But so I stretched out because while my hip flexors got so tight, your psoas muscle, your psoas muscle is what tightens up when you're in a fight or flight situation. Mm. I was in a fight or flight situation all through my deployments, jumping out of airplanes, being in scary situations, doing things I hated doing was, some, was my whole life pretty much. That so as muscle got so tight, it started pulling on my T12. Right. Collapsed my spine. You have a bunch of nerve endings going through there. I, I can go all day talking about this. And I got severely very sick. So basically what I did was I started this crazy stretch routine. And I literally have healed myself through the wow. discipline I had. And what people won't believe is I got to a point where I stretched out for 8 to 12 hours a day. And it went so from, essentially, like most of your waking hours when you're not working out. Stretching. Yeah. And it went from that to six hours a day. Then from six hours a day to four hours a day, the more it opened up. So the hips and what are your were, soul. Is there like a specific routine of stretches that you would go through? Or I just... would sit and stretch a whole big routine, a whole mess of like opening up your abductors because your abductors are attached to your hips, your hip flexors. Your, everything is attached at, at this region here, your, mm -hmm. your, your midsection, your, your hips. And my hips got so tight that I couldn't even squat down. I had so much back pain. So that's why, I, another reason why I started running. Running, you stay upright. I couldn't squat anymore. I couldn't do any of that power lifting stuff. So I just, the only thing I can do is run. Running didn't bother me too bad. And it mm -hmm. got to the point where I couldn't run either. And my health got real poor because my spine was collapsed. And um, I just got real sick. And basically, I healed myself because nobody, no doctor can find out what's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't run a lot. I couldn't do any activities, so I said, you know what, I'm going to bury myself in stretching. And what happened was I had this huge knot on the back of my head. The knot came from my spine collapsing and getting tighter and tighter and tighter. It developed fluid or whatever. Long story short, as I started stretching out, that bump started going away. And the, the smaller the bump got, the healthier I got. And That's I was like, amazing. what in the world is going on? So I, would, so I shave every day, so I would feel this bump. And the bump, and you can see it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can see it. Yeah. So most people think everybody's a bump in the back of here. My bump was like this big. Mm -hmm. It was huge. And the more I stretched, the more it went away. The more it went away, the more the healthier I got. I was like, man. So I'd be like, I'm gonna keep on stretching. So my stretching became a. It was crazy, and I got healthier. And I was like, my gosh. So I stretched more and more and more. And now it's. I've been doing it now for three years. I haven't missed a day of stretching in three years.
Wow. So now is it is it literally like is it are you still at the four hour mark of stretching? I'm, I'm now at like the two hour mark. But what's funny about it, I went from so I I won a race called Strolling Gym. It's a 41 mile race in in Tennessee. I average about seven minute miles for 41 miles back in the back country, all mm-hmm. up and down hills. I could never even do that. Yeah, I've run marathons pretty fast, but my average training pace was at 8.30, 8.40. After I stretched out my hips, my average running pace now is between 7.15 and 7.30. Wow. And that's just because that's how crazy tight I was. So I'm a, if I want to get back into ultra running right now and really compete at a high level for me, I would run races a minute and a half faster per mile. That's crazy. And that's what I do now. So I did strolling gym a few years ago before I started stretching. I did it in 5.30 something, which is a good time. I did it this year, this past year in 4.50 something. Wow, and you're probably not training near the no, volume that you no, used to, right? No, no way, no way. That's so interesting. I mean, there's this whole other you know, camp sort of philosophy, especially in running, mm-hmm. that's like anti-stretching. They're right? out of like their you minds, man. You stretch. I was the same way, yeah. that's why I never stretched. I was like, man, anti, because you don't, because you, you lose those fibers, those, uh, you're an idiot. I would stretch out for eight hours in a day. And yeah, it takes a while for your body to get used to it. But most of us are sitting most of the time. When you yeah. sit, you're tightening up that hip flexor muscle, that psoas muscle. That's one of the most important muscles in your stride to get that long stride. Half of our strides have, shr- have, have shrunk by inches. Mm-hmm. Your stride is how you run. And when I started stretching, I was like, my God, man, I'm clipping at a 730, 715 at the same heart rate. Your stride's not not restricted anymore. not restricted as much as it was. So Mm -hmm. I've gained a minute per mile. That's super interesting. Just by stretching. So people say shit because they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. They don't even know. So get knowledgeable before you. And I've read it. I read it. I listened to it. So I didn't stretch. It's the dumbest thing on the planet. Mm-hmm. And people talk about, don't hold a stretch longer than 30 seconds or 15, whatever the hell shit is. I'll be in a stretch for 30, 40 minutes. Come in it, go out of it. Go in it, go out of it. Go in it, go out of it. Don't believe everything you hear, figure out yourself. My organs were pretty much shutting down. And I went from a guy who could run 205 miles to a guy who couldn't get out of bed. And the doctors were trying to search what was wrong. That's why I figured out the psoas muscle. No one figured it out. And I, I hit it by accident. So... I've, I've missed two days of stretching out in five years. And so what happened was all the shit I did to myself, the stress I was under, physical, mental, all kind of shit, it just choked me out from the inside. And doctors put me on all kind of medication. And the medication started doing the exact opposite. Of like what, what kind of shit? I was on um, DHEA. I was on um, some different things to, for uh, my estrogen, different things for my um, – I was on anything to do with your – with, like, like with your endocrine system, I'll thyroid medicine, um, good God, I was on cortisol, all, all kind of shit to get my stuff. And I, I, I had like this lump in my throat from like the heart was always, I, I couldn't run down the street. My body was just jacked up, couldn't sleep. My whole body was just down, shutting down. I could give you a lot more than that, but just to give you an example, I was fucking dying. And so I couldn't do anything. I went from a guy who was this guy to a guy who can't do shit. And doctors are like, I don't know what's wrong with you, man. You, you know, your labs are this. Is it PTSD? Is it what's, what's going on? I knew it wasn't any of that shit. So I sat in the bed one day and I realized, man, my life is over. This is it. But I, it gave me time to reflect on everything I had accomplished. Cause I'd never taken time to reflect on the kid I was to the man I am now. So honestly, the time I wasn't working out, it was the best time of my life because I got a chance to really reflect back and be proud of who I became. I never took time to do that. It was like one after another. Get the fuck after it. Get after it. Get after it. You ain't good enough, motherfucker. Get after it. Get after it. And um, I got halted. So anyway, this process went on for a while. More medication. This isn't working. That's not working. No doctor can figure it out. I'm like, fuck it. I saw this doc about eight years before this happened. And he was like, hey, man, you're so fucking tight. I've never seen anybody in my life as tight as you. You need 50,000 hours of stretching. He used to do some crazy number. I was like, whatever. Stretching, you know, stretch. Stretching is bad for you. So You thought stretching was bad yeah, for you? Yeah, stretching is bad for you, man. Why did you think that? I read some article. You know, I, you know, <laughs> oh, you know man, fuck, fuck stretching, man. You know, I worked out so hard. I didn't have time to stretch, man. I was, I was running right. 150 miles a week. I right. was biking to work, man. I was, I was getting after it, man. I was working a full-time job. 
and um, stretching and doing that. So my body was literally getting tighter and tighter, not just from what I was doing. Everybody thinks, oh, because you ran this. No, it wasn't that, man. And um, so I said, no, I'm going to try and stretch out. So I don't do anything for like 10 minutes or, you know, I don't do no six-minute abs bullshit. So I started stretching out one hour, hour and a half. Long story short, man, I shaved my head almost every morning. And that bump that was on the back of my fucking head, I started realizing it was shrinking for some fucking reason. I don't know why, because I, I shaved my head back, and I was like, it's getting smaller. The smaller that bump got, the healthier I got. The smaller that bump got, I was like, oh, hold up, motherfucker. What, what, what's going on? That so as muscles started getting more and more stressed out, more and more relaxed. And over a period of five years, I'm in the best shape of my damn life right now from stretching out. Wow. That's all it was. I went from like, I can't even count the medications I was on. Now I'm on a very low dose thyroid pill. All right, it is three o'clock in the morning. And if you see here, it says uh, 74 minutes on there. The phone actually flips over at 100 minutes, double zeros. So I've been stretching out now for 174 minutes. And you're probably wondering why I'm stretching out so late. Had to do a 10 mile run. Had to uh, go to the gym. I'm writing my book, which is taking me a long time. Had about 600 emails and different posts. I had to uh, respond to you know, different comments. And you know, if I went to sleep right now, it would haunt me. It would bother me that I missed my stretch. So life's about sacrifice. Life's about having self-discipline. Life's about focus, all those things. And it's 24 hours in a day, make it work to your advantage. And yes, I do get plenty of sleep, but life is all about sacrifice to achieve what you want. This is a, a normal day. Normal day for me, a, a normal day. So let's say a light day. Light day. Light day is at least a seven mile run. I will... Every every four every other day, so about four days a week, um, calisthenics plus gym workout. So I don't do any gym workout without hitting pull-ups, push-ups. I call it nickels and dimes. So like five pull-ups, ten push-ups, or I'll go, you know, quarters and whatever. Like it's like twenty-five pull-ups or in like fifty push-ups. So I have all these different things I mess up. So I will do weights with calisthenics, and every single night I stretch. For at least every night, I stretch for at least two hours. Two hours? Every night. Every night. So you stretch after you're done working out? Yeah, so at nighttime, usually I'll be uh, either in a, in a quiet room or I'll be watching TV. Or a good, I love sports. I'll be watching the game, and I'm on the floor, man. And that's what I do. So you just stretch while you're doing stuff? I stretch while I do stuff. Two hours is a long-ass time to stretch. Is this just because you're trying to correct all I'm the years? I'm trying to correct. Um, years of not doing that. No, years of this. Do you ever fuck with yoga? A lot. Yeah? Yoga is the shit. What do you do? Hot I have yoga? My, I have my own yoga. Mm -hmm. So I kind of invent my own little yoga for what my body needs. I've done hot yoga several times. Y yoga's huge. Yoga's huge. Like holding those positions. And I, I'm big and holding them for a long period of time. So that's where my stretch is. Like people say, don't hold stretches for a long time. I hold them for a long period of time. I'm trying to get full range of motion. A lot of people go on for like, like, um, like my shoulders all messed up. I get surgery on it. Nah, if you don't have full range of motion in your body, don't go in and get cut on, man, until you know that your body is actually opened up. You know, we start to get knuckle dragger syndrome from doing all these push-ups. You never work your back, you know, like a, like a, like a, your rear delts. So here you are, you start hunching over before you know your joints are out of whack. You need to get full range of motion before you know how fucked up you truly are. Hmm. So I'm I'm always working on full range of motion like a kid. They run so effortlessly. They're always in full range of motion. As you get older and tighter and sit and more stressed, your body starts to get more and more tight. Therefore, your shoulders start to get out of balance and out of, and out of joint and out of socket. Therefore, you know, it's popping. Yeah, It's popping because you're fucking tight. Open it up first. Open it up. Can you, can, can, can you touch your hands behind each other and, and raise them up behind you? You know, it's all these different ranges of motion that... I got real smart on from a guy and I took it to another level. So are you, do you work with a trainer or do you always work out by yourself? Everything I do. I've never had a trainer in my entire life. Really? Never. Not one time. Do you read about physiology or exercise science or anything like that? Nothing. 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 But what about like when they learn new shit about new ways to, you know, enhance shoulder stability right. or new exercises? You're not interested? Nope. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> 
I don't do it for that reason. What still, do you do it still, for? still to this day, man. Still to this day. It's, to this day, it is for me to become better mentally. Mm. How I look has just become a like I have thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles on this body. Running, pull-ups, push-ups, swimming, whatever you want to call it. This body is what it is now. It's from repetition. It's not from studying, you know, hey, if you hold a plank for this long, fuck all that bullshit. I don't, I don't care about it. I just do it for my mind. Right. I want to continue to harden because that's the only thing I want. That's what I want. I want to have that mind ready for life. But you also want to increase your range of motion. Like oh, you yeah. Said before, range of motion is huge. You want to make sure that you're, you're, you know, you're not causing any additional mm -hmm. injuries. Do, wouldn't you want to like stabilize some areas that maybe you feel like you might have weaknesses and find out new techniques to do that? Have you seen me with my shirt off? No. Yeah. It's stable as fuck. <laughs> <laughs>